Welcome to episode number 47. I'm CJ Wellman. Thank you for joining us. In this week's episode, we examine whether India tried to frame Pakistan by deliberately firing a missile in the direction of commercial airliners on 9th of March. But first, a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now let's get into it. With the world fixated on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, India fired a cruise missile at 7.15 p.m. on the night of Tuesday, March 9. It flew more than 100 kilometers into Pakistani airspace before crashing harmlessly near the town of Mian Chanu. Two days later, India blamed a technical malfunction. This is the BrahMos missile believed to be the weapon that India accidentally fired into Pakistan on the 9th of March in an incident Delhi has now deeply regretted. The BrahMos is among the most advanced cruise missiles of its class. It flies at three times the speed of sound. It's believed to be almost impossible to intercept, which is why the launch of this missile under whatever circumstances could have triggered a response from Pakistan, particularly since it now appears that Pakistan actually tracked the flight of the missile. There's hardly anything more terrifying than a missile being fired from one nuclear armed state to another nuclear armed state, even if accidentally. But there's something about this story that doesn't quite add up. First of all, why didn't India use its dedicated army to army hotline or the famous red phone to inform Pakistan that one of its missiles had been fired in error? Secondly, why did it take India almost 72 hours to acknowledge the misfiring? And thirdly, there are an array of procedures, protocols and safety measures to ensure cruise missiles are not mistakenly fired, which explain why there's never been an accidental firing of a cruise missile from one nuclear armed country to another. That is, of course, until now. And more to the point in not warning Pakistan immediately, it violated a 1991 agreement between the two countries that obligates each to immediately warn the other of an inadvertent violation of the other's airspace and without delay. India's two-day silence suggests something more sinister was at play because cruise missiles are almost never fired mistakenly. Now, what I'm about to show you is a flight scanner from the day the missile was fired. If you cast your eyes to the center of the screen, you can see the missile track from right to left, from Ambala, India to Mian Chanu, Pakistan. What you're watching is an Indian cruise missile fly above or below the flight path of three commercial airliners, including Fly Dubai heading from Dubai to Silkot, Indigo flying from Srinagar to Mumbai, and Air Blue flying from Lahore to Riyadh. In other words, the world almost became witness to a major catastrophe, one resulting in hundreds of innocent lives lost. So what explains India's two-day silence? Well, either it was hoping Pakistan hadn't noticed the missile entered its airspace, which is unlikely given Pakistan was quick to announce it had detected and located the missile strike. Or India was using the distraction of the Ukrainian war to test Pakistan's air defense systems and capabilities. Or even more sinister, India deliberately targeted civilian aircraft as part of a plot to blame Pakistan for an act of global terrorism. Okay, look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. In fact, there's not a single conspiracy I've ever accepted, excluding the one that pins blame on the Mafia for the killing of JFK, but that's just a fact. The Mafia totally did it. How else do you explain Jack Ruby's Mafia ties and him going silently to his grave, having never told a single person why he shot and killed Lee Harvey Oswald? But I digress. The bottom line is I highly doubt India deliberately tried to shoot down an international passenger airliner given satellite and tracking technology makes it impossible to misattribute the firing of a two-ton cruise missile, therefore making it impossible to blame Pakistan for the atrocity. That said, however, India has a long history of blaming Pakistan for terrorist attacks without there being any evidence whatsoever of Pakistani government involvement. It accused Pakistan of carrying out the attack on the Indian parliament in 2001, the terrorist attack in Mumbai in 2008, and the suicide bombing that killed 46 Indian soldiers in the Indian-occupied Kashmir in 2019. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has promised a strong response after a suicide bomber killed 46 soldiers in India-administered Kashmir on Thursday. India has said it will ensure the complete diplomatic isolation of Pakistan following the attack, the deadliest to hit the disputed territory in decades. India accuses Pakistan of failing to act against the militant group based in Pakistan, which said it carried out the bombing. You see, blaming Pakistan for terrorism fulfills multiple objectives for the Indian government. One, it plays well to a domestic political audience that increasingly sees Muslims and Pakistan as the great enemy to the Hindu nationalist project. Two, it damages Pakistan's global reputation. 
and three, it undermines global support for Kashmiri independence. And blaming Pakistan without evidence for the killing of 46 Indian soldiers in Kashmir played a huge part in Modi winning re-election later that same year, which is why many credible Indian commentators have accused the Modi regime of either staging the 2019 attack or knowing about it in advance but then doing nothing to stop it. Some breaking news that's coming in at the top of this hour. MIM Chief Asaduddin Owaisi has now slammed Prime Minister Modi over the Pulwama attack. Owaisi accused Prime Minister Modi of eating beef and sleeping peacefully when the Pulwama attack took place. Owaisi also said, and I quote here, You can see that 300 cell phones were there in Balakot, but you failed to see how 50 kgs of RDX was moved to Pulwama under your nose. What's important is this. India has successfully branded Pakistan an exclusive sponsor of terrorism in the context of Indian-Pakistan relations, which in turn has stymied Pakistan's economic development and helped India successfully sideline the Kashmir conflict from the international agenda. India also uses baseless allegations of terrorism to lobby the Financial Action Task Force to blacklist Pakistan from the international banking system, putting it alongside pariah countries such as North Korea and Iran. But here's the thing. A recent investigation found 44 Indian banks have been flagged by the US Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network for potential money laundering, financial fraud, and you guessed it, terrorism financing. Which raises questions about the extent to which Indian government has financed and sponsored terrorist activities in Pakistan, Kashmir, and Balochistan. Here's former US Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel telling an American audience India finances terrorism to destabilize Pakistan. India is the other piece of this. India, uh, for some time, has always used Afghanistan uh, as a second front. And India uh, has, uh, uh, for over the years, financed problems for Pakistan on that side of the border. And you can carry that in, into uh, Many dimensions, but Last year, the Pakistani government presented a trove of evidence, including bank transactions worth millions of dollars, documents and audio clips, and details of contacts between members of India's intelligence agencies and Islamic militant groups, including the Pakistani Taliban. Recently, 30 Indian Daesh militants were relocated from India to various camps along Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Indian intelligence officer named Colonel Rajesh, who is employed in the Indian Embassy in Afghanistan. It reads that he has already held four meetings with commanders of these terrorist organizations. Here we also have the evidence of RAW providing weapons, ammunition and IED. Clearly India has gotten away with selling the international community a one-sided narrative while it sponsors terrorism and cultivates seeds of hatred in Pakistan to advance its geopolitical ambitions. Which brings us full circle to the opening of our show. So, did India deliberately or mistakenly fire a missile into Pakistan early this month? I don't know. But what I do know for certain is that the Indian government goes to extraordinary and often insane lengths to demonize Pakistan, including the recent setting up of hundreds of fake news sites to influence European politicians to favor India over Pakistan in Kashmir. Now, in December 2020, the independent NGO EU Disinfo Lab uncovered a global network of Indian fake websites and propaganda forums aimed at influencing decision making at the United Nations and the European Union. Operating in 116 countries, the coordinated network of over 550 websites has produced and amplified content to undermine Pakistan and China. I mean, what more can one say about India in the age of Narendra Modi? Anyway, that's my time for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the words to your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed.